Right now at 6, significant snow shuts down power across the Cooley region. And La Crosse Fire continues its investigation of a house fire Friday, with officials seeking the public's help in finding out how the fire started. Watching WKDT La Crosse, this is News 8 Now at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us for News 8 Now at 6. I'm Ken Kozarowski. Many Cooley Region residents are waiting for their power to be restored after Sunday's snowfall. News 8 Now's Dua Israr spoke to Excel Energy to find out when you can turn your lights back on. Hey, Dua. Ken, last week, people got used to the record-breaking temperatures. 70s, 80s, and even 90s were a nice change of pace from the cold. Well, that all changed again yesterday. April 17th, 2022 can be considered an average day. So kind of a mix of sun and clouds through the day. Temperatures were in the 50s with some rain. And it uh, looks like we're going to stay dry uh, tomorrow and most of Sunday as well. April 17, 2023 is a different story. Snow removal folks had taken their plows off the trucks and kind of thought that this was the end of it, but uh, here we have it. On Sunday, record-setting snow swept across the Cooley region. When I got up this morning, we had 14 inches on the back of our, our deck. For some, shoveling the evidence of this winter storm wasn't the only problem. Later last night, we started getting quite a few outages come in or called in, and then it continued through today. Thousands of people in the Cooley region and beyond were left with no power. At the peak, I think we were at about 10,000, and, and that might have been part of even beyond our area a little bit and now like I said we're down to about 2500. While many people were ready to splash into spring. Well actually I'm feeling pretty good uh, given the conditions that that we've had here but it seems like that's going to be it I hope. This April it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Now this Harrow says the snowfall was tough on trees. Many of the outages happened because some of the tree branches couldn't handle the weight of the snow and broke damaging power lines on their way down. Ken? That makes sense. Thanks to Excel Energy says it hopes to have all power restored by the end of the day. In the meantime, the Grand Crossing and Willow Trail and the La Crosse River Marsh are closed until further notice. The closure started at 9 this morning. According to a release, the La Crosse Parks Department said the closures are because of high water. The trails will be closed until further notice. Meantime, La Crosse City officials are closing four boat launch facilities effective immediately. The four coming up on your screen now closed until further notice again because of high water. And Fountain City officials are asking for volunteers to help businesses and residents prepare for floodwaters. The city is asking volunteers to commit to two hour shifts, the first starting 8 a.m. tomorrow. They're hoping for 20 to 30 volunteers per shift to be sandbagging. Volunteers should bring a pair of work gloves and a shovel if they have one. The city will provide all other supplies as well as food and water. Anyone interested in volunteering can contact the mayor, Publix, Public Works, or City Hall to sign up for a time. They can also just show up on Liberty Street near the post office and check in that way. We'll post contact info on our website, news8000.com. Now we had communities bracing for flood watch at the end of last week and where, uh, where does this snow maybe bill kind of lead us in uh, how how important that is for, for the rest of this week. Yeah, unfortunately, you'll recall our conversation last Thursday. I said we need some moisture yeah. around here to get rid of the fire danger and the dry conditions. We sure. just don't want too much moisture. But uh, the rain that fell across the region Saturday and Saturday night would have been plenty. Mother Nature didn't listen because on top of that, she produced a record breaking snowfall across the region. And look at some of these amounts. I broke it down by county for you. Uh, Jackson County, 10 to 20 inches plus. Yeah, there were reports of 20 to as much as 22 plus inches of snow in a handful of spots where a very narrow band of uh, really heavy snow set up. Clark County, 10 to almost 20 inches of snow. La Crosse and Trempolo counties, anywhere from 9 to 16 inches plus. Monroe and Houston County, 6 to 12 inches. Winona County, 4 to 11, and Vernon County, 5 to 10 inches of snow. So this is additional moisture that will uh, thankfully gradually melt a little bit over the next couple of days, but also add more water into the river system. And a lot of those rivers dump into the Mississippi, which is already in flood. Now, current temperatures in the 30s east of the river, uh, 40s near and west of La Crosse. So a chilly day. And boy, this storm system was a massive system, slow moving as well. And that's why the snow piled up so much. It's now centered over the east central Great Lakes. Current temperatures still in the 30s and 40s. And we're looking at uh, temperatures tonight 
unseasonably cold as winds decrease, clouds decrease, lows in the 20s for most, including about 27 in the cross. You know what? The last thing we need is more moisture. Mm. Unfortunately, I've got some rain and thunderstorm activity in the forecast Wednesday and Thursday. Details coming up. All right. Thanks a lot, Bill. Well, back on the new side of things kind of lends itself to weather as well. Fire officials are lifting burn bans in Vernon County and the city of Onalaska. Vernon County had been under a burn ban since last Wednesday, Onalaska since last Monday. Per Vernon County's release, outdoor burning can resume, including brush and grass, but they're asking residents to call Vernon County Sheriff Dispatch before you start burning and once you're done. The City of La Crosse Fire Department is asking for help in its investigation of a house fire. The fire department is asking people to send them any photos or video of Friday's fire on Brackenwood Court near County Road B. The fire department reported in a release that the fire started around 2.45 p.m. last Friday and the house suffered major damage, though all residents made it out safely. An official tells News 8 Now they don't suspect any foul play here. They believe any photos or video taken before fire crews arrived could help them find out where and how the fire started. So if you have some visual media that you think could be helpful, the department asks you send them to the email address right there on your screen. You can also call that number for more information. Buffalo County Police have arrested a Winona man who allegedly led police on a car chase through two counties. A Buffalo County Sheriff's release says 47-year-old Dennis Lemke fled north on Highway 35 during an attempted traffic stop, allegedly throwing bags of suspected methamphetamine out his window. Police called off the chase for public safety, but Pierce County deputies later found Lemke's car abandoned in a field in Salem Township. K-9 units later found Lemke lying down on a hillside and police made the arrest. Per the release, Lemke was on probation for two drug-related cases in Pepin County. The defrocked Roman Catholic Cardinal and the face of the church's clergy sexual abuse crisis has been charged in Wisconsin with sexually assaulting an 18-year-old man. A criminal complaint filed Friday, Friday alleges that in 1977, Theodore McCarrick fondled a man while staying in a cabin in southeastern Wisconsin. The alleged victim, who was not named, told investigators that McCarrick had repeatedly sexually assaulted him when he was 11 and even brought him to parties where older men sexually assaulted him. McCarrick was removed from the priesthood in 2019 after a Vatican investigation found he had molested adults and children. McCarrick was the highest ranking Roman Catholic official in the U.S. to face criminal charges for sexual abuse after accusations in 2021. The church has confirmed it made financial settlements with adults who accused McCarrick of sexual misconduct. We are learning more about the victims of this weekend's mass shooting at a 16th birthday party in Alabama. Police say four people were killed and 28 others were hurt, mostly teenagers. 18-year-old Phil Dowdell, 23-year-old Corbin Holston, 19-year-old Marcea Collins, and 17-year-old Shankia Nicole Smith were killed. The birthday girl, Alexis Dowdell, witnessed the shooting. She took care of her brother when he was first wounded. I grabbed him and I was um, patting him on his face and um, I said, um, stay with me. I said, stay with me. You strong. I said, you strong. I said, you're going to be fine. But she lost her brother shortly after that. A group of lawmakers in Alabama have called for new gun legislation today, something they had planned before the deadly weekend shooting. Witnesses report more than one shooter in this instance. Police are asking anyone with information to come forward, but have not provided other details. The Gun Violence Archive reports 162 mass shootings in the U.S. so far this year. Protesters marched through the National Mall carrying photos of loved ones lost to gun violence and calling on Congress to ba ban assault weapons. Lindsay Hartman was at the 4th of July parade in Highland Park, Illinois last year when a gunman killed seven people and wounded 48 others. She says she shielded her four-year-old from the bullets that day. I'm terrified every single day, every single moment, because it's not if it will happen again, it's when. Now, a new CBS poll finds 62% of Americans want to ban the AR-15 semi-automatic rifle, but the poll also found stark differences along ideological lines. 81% of liberals think the U.S. would be safer if fewer or no people owned guns. 40% of conservatives, meanwhile, think the U.S. would be safer if more people or everyone had guns. And right now, all Wisconsin schools are gun-free zones. But as Braden Ross explains, a new proposal in the Wisconsin state legislature could change that. Is this a perfect solution? No, it's not a perfect solution. Is it a possible solution? Yeah. A new bill proposed in the Wisconsin legislature this week could mean Wisconsin teachers can be armed at school. When it comes to our kids and our schools and protecting them in schools, I think we should put all options on the table. 
It's an idea that isn't popular with everyone. The last thing we need is more loaded guns in schools. But Representative Scott Allen says it's something schools are asking for. The idea for the bill came last summer when the Germantown School District passed a resolution asking the state to let them decide if school staff can carry firearms on campus. Wisconsin's law, which is a statewide law, preempts local school districts from making their own decisions relative to the protection and safety of their students. Right now, Wisconsin state law makes all schools in the state gun-free zones, something Allen says is a one-size-fits-all response to a complicated issue. Under his bill, the question of arming teachers would be left up to every individual school district. So if one community doesn't want to do that at all, then they voice that to their school board and their school board acts accordingly. If another school district says this is entirely appropriate for us, they can then implement their own policies. It's an approach Allen says could save lives. Every minute matters and um, in some communities, especially some of our rural communities, it could be a lot of minutes before authorities could arrive. But still, critics just aren't convinced. I don't think that anybody, no matter where they live, deserves to go to school and know that there are loaded weapons on school grounds. That doesn't make any of us safer. Governor Tony Evers said if this lands on his desk, he would not sign the legislation. Still ahead, debt ceiling disagreements. The White House and Speaker of the House remain entrenched over the future of American credit and spending. At Stanton Optical, independent eye doctors are available for eye exams whenever you need one. You should have seen me before I got mine. You're so quiet. Are you mad at me? Book your free same-day eye exam at Stanton Optical today. This is how legends are made. Chevy Silverado and new Silverado HD. Choose your own path with the number one best-selling retail full-size pickup and see where it takes you. Find new roads. It's Chevy truck season. Get 0% financing plus make no monthly payments for 90 days on all 2023 Silverado 1500 pickups or current Chevy owners get 3750 total cash allowance on all 2023 Silverado pickups with a turbo high output engine. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Rise and shine. Today you start a new and exciting adventure. So step up and dream big. At the School District of La Crosse, let curiosity guide you. Not fear of the unknown. Meet friends, learn and play. Embrace change. Discover hidden talents. And let loose your unbridled potential. Build a better future. Because here, anything is possible. The School District of La Crosse. Dream. Believe. Achieve. I just got the new Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra from US Cellular. With the most powerful processor yet, it can game smoother than ever. With nightography, it can take selfies in low light. Click. And with a longer battery life and US Cellular's 5G network, it can stream my favorite shows around the clock. Amazing. Can it go back in the back? Yeah, it can go back in the back. Okay. Did you just kiss the phone? Get the Samsung Galaxy S23 free. No trade-in needed from US Cellular. I kissed it? Yes. Stanton Optical is the best value in eye care. We do the math, people. For $79, you get all this. That costs over $400 at Lens Crafters, over $200 at Walmart, and over $150 at America's Best. When it comes to value, Stanton Optical is the top bird. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy traveled to Wall Street to say the future of the U.S. economy hinges on a showdown with President Biden over the debt ceiling. Congress has until this summer to raise the debt ceiling to pay for bills it has already passed. If it fails to do so, the U.S. could default on its debt for the first time in history. McCarthy has, has a proposal that would return spending to 2022 levels and limit federal spending growth to 1% over the next 10 years. And this proposal is not likely to pass in the Democrat-led Senate. Let me be very clear. There's two things I will not do. I will not raise taxes, and I, I will not pass the clean debt ceiling. It just won't pass. Now, the White House issued a statement saying, quote, there's one responsible solution to the debt limit, addressing it promptly without brinksmanship or hostage taking. The government says it should have a more precise date for when it will run out of money and default once it calculates this year's income tax receipts. The deadline for individuals to file their taxes is tomorrow. After the break, rising water draws a crowd in a Minnesota city. One business owner says the water is already turning her restaurant into an island. And I'm Chief Meteorologist Bill Grawl. Again, we went from summer 70s, 80s, even 90 last Wednesday to record snowfall across the region. I'll have an update and the latest Mississippi River water levels with my full forecast coming up next. 
We've done many, many renovations. We bought an old house and have made it into an up-to-date house. Whenever anything involves plumbing, the first call I make is to Maxwell White. Their technicians put together a great final product. What does this have to do with law? Absolutely nothing. As a veteran of our country's armed services, you have already made the ultimate sacrifice. Why should you have to continue to do that? Through no fault of your own, you may be experiencing hardships, such as the inability to pay rent, utilities, or receive other life-sustaining services. And once again, you're called upon by your family to serve and protect. We want you to know we are here to support you. The Veterans Rental Assistance Program was created by and for people living in Wisconsin, with benefit approvals being issued to veterans in just days, not months. It's not easy to ask for a hand up, but we are clear in our mission. No Wisconsin veteran should ever have to face homelessness or lose heat, power, or water again. 833 W-I-S-V-R-A-P. That's 833-947-8727. This time of year has many different names. We call it Showtime. It's when there's work to be done and fun to be had. Plus, it's time for spring bonus offers at your Northland Ford dealers, where you can save big on a Ford SUV to make it all happen. Start the season off right with 0% financing for 60 months, plus 1,000 in open trade assist on a new Ford Explorer. It's Showtime. Now, for a limited time only, get 0% financing for 60 months, plus 1,000 in open trade assist on a new Ford Explorer. Only at your Northland Ford dealers. Sick of running out of hot water? The professionals at Maxwell White are here to handle all of your water heater needs. Our licensed technicians can install, repair, or replace any type of water heater with same day or next day service. Call Maxwell White. Plumbing done right. You expect more. So thank you for watching News 8 Now. Well, raging floodwaters are bringing spectators to one Minnesota city in the north. The St. Louis River rising at the J. Cook State Park in Carleton. The Minnesota DNR has closed the park's swinging bridge for safety. Now, one business owner in Scanlon says her restaurant is becoming an island. The water there about three or four inches below her storage room. She says if it rises too high, guests won't be able to enter or exit the building. Now, Minnesota's Governor Tim Walz today signed a bill that put $40 million into the state's disaster assistance account because, Bill, a lot of communities, especially along the Mississippi, mm -hmm. are going to be having this at the forefront of their mind for a little while. Oh, well, yeah, and you look at the uh, river flood warnings graphic, and you can see not only the uh, warnings that are in effect around La Crosse, but also up around the Twin Cities, lots of green there, uh, high water levels along the Minnesota River, the St. Croix River, and, of course, the Upper Mississippi River as well, and even some smaller creeks and streams that dump into the Mississippi, and all of that flows our way uh, down the main channel of the Mississippi River. So we've still got that Chippewa River running high from southern parts of Dunn County down towards uh, Durand and the confluence with the Mississippi. So river flood warning remains there. It has been dropped for the Eau Claire areas. You're below flood stage now. But boy, the Mississippi River all up and down our viewing area from Wabasha to the north and west down to Prairie du Chien and McGregor uh, already above flood stage and will get even higher. Here's the latest data as of the top of the hour. Wabasha up to 14.75, Winona 15.16, La Crosse just over 12 and a half feet, and Prairie du Chien McGregor 16.34. Uh, the far right column has the forecast crest and date. I will caution you that these levels can be changeable. Uh, again, more rain in the forecast at times this week, and uh, it can just be a tricky forecast to begin with. Also, the forecast crest dates could be adjusted a little bit, so just keep that in mind. Forecast crest for Wabasha just under 16 feet April 21st and 22nd, uh, 18 feet in Winona around the 22nd or 23rd, just over 15 feet here in La Crosse. That is uh, one of the higher uh, levels on record April 23rd and over 23 uh, 21.3 feet, I should say, after April 24th as that water makes its way downstream. So if you have interests along the Mississippi, uh, definitely keep an eye 
uh, close eye on those levels. High today, 41. That's our current temperature. We should be around 60. And here's the snowfall, two and a half inches today, nine and a half inches total for the storm. That puts our seasonal total up to 63.6 inches. That is a foot and a half above average here in La Crosse. So say goodbye to the snowstorm, thankfully. My goodness, it meant business, and it continues to bring rain and snow to much of the Great Lakes. That is moving out. Unfortunately, we've got some unsettled weather upstream, uh, bringing some rain and thunderstorm chances. Uh, by Wednesday and Thursday. Look at the spring and summer like temperatures not too far to our south and west, but boy, winter has a strong hold on us with the snow on the ground. Temperatures in the 30s, 40s near and west of La Crosse. Still kind of breezy. Northwesterly winds still gusting over 20 to 30 miles per hour in some spots. So Sky Tracker shows decreasing clouds overnight and lots of sunshine for our Tuesday, so a much needed dry day. But watch as we head into Wednesday morning. Some scattered showers and thunderstorms make their way across the area in kind of off and on fashion on Wednesday and on Thursday. Quick check of your zone forecast. I want to show you how cold it's going to get tonight between 22 and 27 across the county. In fact, most spots will be in the 20s. I wouldn't be shocked if, uh, say, our traditional colder spots, especially with how much snow is on the ground, drop into the teens. Uh, but again, most spots in the 20s, which is abnormally cold for this time of year. 27 in the cross, decreasing clouds, decreasing wind. Tomorrow, plenty of sunshine, some uh, melting going on. 51 for the high, still well short of our average high of 60, though. Uh, mid 50s Wednesday and Thursday, unfortunately, scattered showers and thunderstorms. Come on, Mother Nature, we don't need any more moisture right now. We were begging for it a week ago. Now we want the valve shut off for a while. Small chance of showers on Friday, dry but cooler for the weekend. Highs between about 45 and 50. All right, Bill, thanks very okay. much. Coming up next in sports, a former Caledonia standout has decided on his next chapter. Plus, the Bucks are in a serious hole after losing their superstar in Game 1. His status for Game 2, next. Come explore and plan your next home improvement project at the Boards Door Home Improvement's historic eight-building showroom. 524 Copeland Avenue, La Crosse. No one gives you more choices than Dahl Auto. We have the best selection in the region with over 400 new vehicles from nine different brands. Schedule a VIP appointment or buy online at DahlAuto.com. Get 11% off everything in Menards and start your project today. Expand your outdoor living space with our great in-stock selection of concrete landscape blocks. Save today on 16 by 16 patio blocks. Get two for $6 after rebate. Add style to your home's exterior with Novick Accent Siding Panels. Replicate the look of stacked stone masonry at a fraction of the cost. Save 11% on all Novick Siding Panels now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Are you feeling confused or overwhelmed by all your Medicare choices? You're not alone. We have recommended his brother, my sister, and my, my brother. They answered all of my questions clearly and concisely, and they thought of things that I hadn't even thought of. At Strive Medicare, we're here making Medicare simple for our Cooley Region neighbors. We're located in the Social Security Building in beautiful downtown La Crosse. So stop in today and get your free copy of my book, Making Medicare Simple. Wisconsin is filled with Wisconsin Lottery winners. Some play alone, others play as one. Some had a feeling on the day they won, and some just gave it a shot. Last year, players won over $559 million in prizes with the Wisconsin Lottery. Whether you're a property manager from Waukesha or a retired iron worker from New Holstein, you'll find winners and more winners playing in Wisconsin. The new cars are rolling in at Dahl Auto with over 400 vehicles available. While other dealers have brochures, we have the newest models on the show floor with all the latest technology and safety features. Experience them for yourself at Dahl Auto. Covering all of the exciting action from your community, here's News 8 Now Sports. Best record in the NBA, top seed in the East, home court throughout the playoffs, but after losing their superstar early on Sunday, the Bucks now find themselves in an 0-1 series hole against the eighth-seeded Heat. It all went down in the first quarter yesterday in Game 1. Giannis going up for the score, coming down hard on his lower back. The two-time MVP would leave the game with what was called a lower back contusion at the time. He did not return, just eight minutes of action for Giannis, and Miami took advantage of it as the Heat steal Game 1 in Milwaukee to go up 1-0 in this best-of-seven series. 130-117 to 117 the final. 
on Sunday. But now the focus shifts to game two, and all the attention is on whether Giannis will be ready to go come Wednesday night. Here's what Coach Budenholzer had to say about Giannis' status as of today. He's still sore, um, but I think um, progress, and um, you know he's getting some treatment. And, uh, you know, I think we'll just continue to monitor him uh, for the next, you know, whatever, 24, next day or two. And I'm um, probably fortunate that, you know, two days between games. Um, so, you know, I think still mostly positive, mostly optimistic. Um, but we'll see how he feels over the next, uh, you know, day or two. Now, there is some good news. Giannis's MRI coming back clean on Monday. So signs are pointing to him being available for game two on Wednesday night in Milwaukee. As for Minnesota, a late start for the Timberwolves in Denver last night. Nuggets made it look easy in game one. A 29-point victory for the top seed in the West. 109 to 80 the final in this one. Minnesota had not been held to 80 or fewer points since 2016. Carl Anthony Towns promising things will be different in game two. That one takes place Wednesday night as well in Denver. Onto the ice now, the Stanley Cup playoffs begin tonight for the Wild. Minnesota opens up the postseason in Dallas to take on the Stars. The Wild have lost in the first round the last six times they were in the playoffs. Hopefully this is lucky number seven for Minnesota. Puck drops tonight at 8.30 for game one. And this new King has decided on his next chapter. The former Iowa State Cyclone has decided to transfer to North Dakota. King played in just nine games at Iowa State as a freshman. Big time decision for King. Ken, you are very familiar with this standout. Absolutely. Thoughts on, on the move? Well, I'm getting uh, reports from the Rochester Post Bulletin. They do great work over there that there is some familiarity with the coaching staff in North Dakota, and that was one of the big deals with Iowa State. He knew T.J. Otzelberger very well from the recruiting days, so the familiarity is going to play a role, but okay. he will get significant minutes in North Dakota. There we go. Let's go King. All right, Rob, thanks very much. <laughs> we will be right back. This is how legends are made. Chevy Silverado, a new Silverado HD. Choose your own path with the number one best-selling retail full-size pickup and see where it takes you. Find new roads. It's Chevy truck season. Get 0% financing plus make no monthly payments for 90 days on all 2023 Silverado 1500 pickups or current Chevy owners get 37.50 total cash allowance on all 2023 Silverado pickups with a turbo high open engine. Visit hometownchevy.com. There are so many things we take for granted. So many things. And along with them, sometimes we take the people who depend on them for their survival for granted too. The elderly, disabled, the veterans, people on limited and fixed incomes or folks that lost jobs in sectors hardest hit during the pandemic how can they survive with record increases in their basic cost of living some people just can't come back and through no fault of their own they're being left behind struggling to keep their heat water and power on if you or someone you know needs a hand up our heat Water and power providers are working together to keep you safely in your home. You may not ask for it, but we're here to help. Decreasing clouds, decreasing wind tonight, unseasonably cold, lows in the 20s, including 27 in La Crosse. Melting tomorrow, sunshine 51. Unfortunately, we don't need any moisture right now, but um, scattered showers and thunderstorms back in the picture on Wednesday and Thursday, highs in the mid 50s. A development to watch. All right, thanks, Bill, and thanks for joining us tonight at 6. We'll see you at 10.